change absolutely everything that you agreed to in the first place in managing Manchester United. And you can stay, Eric. Those are the messages coming from Ineos, it would seem. I'm going to get into detail about what stories The Telegraph have just released on what Ineos want from a manager, not quite a manager, actually just a coach. Details on that, updates on Varane, a new sponsor for Manchester United, who actually is in for Ten Hag as well. Is his head going to be turned the other way? Is it not so much Ten Hag wanting to stay, more Ten Hag actually, you know what, if this isn't for me, I've got other offers on the table. All that and a new segment right at the end of the show that I want to bring in for a Friday night starting tonight, guys. Hope you're all well. International break is well and truly halfway through. I'm calling it. It's halfway through. We're nearly there, guys. The build-up to next weekend starts tonight because it's weekend and we can all sit back with a drink. As I can see in my community there, plenty of you are doing right now. The wine, the beer, everything seems to be flowing no one's worried about football because United are not on and we're not concerned about how we're going to play this weekend. So put your feet up, get your slippers on, get the TV on, get YouTube on and get commenting on the show as we go forward. Like I said, guys, on a Friday, we like to get as much interaction as we possibly can from you guys. So let's get into what is actually going on with the World of United. Well, since I spoke to you early on today at lunchtime, a lot has actually come out this afternoon. New sponsors, Malaysia Air for Manchester United, reported four to five million a season for them. Uh, 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 Al-Itiak, uh, Itiad, I think it is. I, I say that wrong every time, but I've, I really don't care about the Saudi League. But yeah, more news about a, con a contract that has... Uh, advanced with Rafael Varane for them but first things first Manchester United have come out today well not so much come out but it's been reported uh, people have contacted the club and the club have basically just said that look no decision has been made uh, amidst rumours of waistcoat man coming into Manchester United after the Euros has finished uh, the club has made no uh, no moves at all or has definitely not made a decision on the future of the next manager of Manchester United, if there is a next manager. I say if there is a next manager because Ten Hag could still be at the football club but not be a manager. You can see at the bottom of the screen there the tweet, the latest tweet, which is what I want to start with tonight uh, from Mike McGrath from The Telegraph, which reads that Manchester United uh, and Ineos reportedly are looking for a more coach-led football team and everything else is dealt with by the hierarchy. Uh, so Jim Radcliffe wants head coach rather than all-powerful manager at Manchester United, regardless of Ten Hag's future. So, reading into that, it also says, the new model would see a head coach focus primarily on the training pitches of Carrington, while recruitment would be led by the incoming sporting director, Dan Ashworth, and CEO, Omar Barada, uh, when they are in place at Manchester United. Uh, now, that for me, it says that Ten Hag, in everything that he agreed when coming to Manchester United, I always revert back to that interview we did with Dutch uh, media after he signed for United. It is a necessary, it is a definite that I need to have power and the final say on transfers. That is written into my contract. So otherwise, I will not work for, say, football club. That's what it is. That's what Ten Hag said in his own words. Now, he likes a lot of power. He likes to have a say. We all know about the veto that he's got as well. Now, and what's coming out here? And this is something that I feel has been brewing and coming. It's like, I said it months ago on many of shows, uh, it wasn't just the results that Ten Hag had to worry about. It's whether or not Ten Hag could fall in line with what Ineos wants him to do. Now, it's all becoming apparent now as to how Ineos want to run the football club. Yes, we can say these are just reports. These are just what's being said in the media and the newspapers. But realistically, it's, they're not mentioning anything about Ten Hag. They're not even coming out and saying uh, that they're looking at other managers. It's just being leaked out. Manchester United have come out and said that we're planning the summer alongside Ten Hag as in the pre-season and the transfer plan and everything like that is going ahead as it was planned before Ineos came in. So that is their stance on it. But what you've got to look at there is how this affects Eric Ten Hag and how he operates from day to day. They, this is what I thought it was. A structure is always coming down to a manager being able to concentrate solely on getting the best out of that team. Now, Ten Hag has got his hands in so many different pots at Manchester United. There needs to be 
a understanding with Ten Hag and Ineos that you are no longer going to be in charge of a lot of the stuff that you have been before in these two seasons that you've been here. You are going to be primarily on that training ground, coaching and getting the best out of these players, whether it be one-on-ones, whether it be these tactics or everything like that, it is on him. So really, what that says to me is that Ineos are really scrutinising everything that Ten Hag does now. Now, what have I picked out in terms of what could be changing right now and how this is actually uh, coming to fruition or is actually real? Then I look at the announcement today that Bruno Fernandes is coming home early. I'm looking at Ten Hag actually trying even more to get a result out of these players in this squad. Like, the incident with Casemiro was all too apparent as well. That was different and how things actually work. The fact that Manchester United didn't announce Casemiro before Brazil did was very, very strange. Uh, if Ten Hag was worried about certain players, and this is what I feel has happened here, Ten Hag is now getting all of his shipping order, i.e. all of his players and his squad. It's like the pressure's on him now. All he has to going to do is scrutinise how he gets results and how the team plays. So he needs everyone available. He knows that this season has been completely scuppered by injuries and people not being available. He's been moaned about it all season. He's not stopped going on about it, about injuries all season. But he now has to find a way to see this season out and get Manchester United in the Champions League. So Casemiro was the first one that we should have noticed. It's like, even before the Liverpool game, like what can we do to make sure that Casemiro is fully fit and ready? Can we afford to lose him? It was a risk. And for me, it also showed that the Champions League is priority over the FA Cup. The fact that United actually knew that Brazil were going to kick up a stink if they said that Casemiro wasn't available. Uh, they didn't want Casemiro to go out to international duty. So, they have told Brazil that he's not going to be going on international duty. And they struggled to handle it because of the game with Liverpool. So, Brazil have announced it straight out the box, like, gone. Like, he's not available. United had no chance of playing him for Brazil. Even though we were all told, I was told that Casemiro's issue wasn't even that serious and he could have played. So United have taken a risk on not having Casemiro in the team. It's worked because we got through in the end, won the game as we know last weekend against Liverpool and now into the semi-finals. So Casemiro was the first sign for me that Ten Hag is having to do a little bit more around Carrington and concentrating on his squad rather than everything else going on. Which I think Ten Hag is probably best at. To be honest, I just think he's been taken away from everything with the whole sort of Manchester United circus that's going on around him. It's hard being a manager for United. So what Ineos are trying to do is take that away and just make him solely concentrate on one job. Fair enough. So that was the first sign that I thought, you know what? Yes. So really, the FA Cup doesn't matter because they were willing to risk Casemiro against Liverpool to make sure that he didn't go to Brazil and was fully fit, fully rested and raring to go for the last 10 games of the season, starting with Brentford on Saturday. So that was that one, and I feel said a lot about the whole situation and what Ineos are wanting and where Ineos are going with their plans. The next one, I think, today was Bruno Fernandes. Uh, coming back after one game with Portugal, having the rest of the international break off, resting him. This is like the first time this has ever happened with United, our first time we've ever heard of this. So, yeah, it's 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 definitely having an effect and Ten Hag is having to change already. I feel like he wants to stay at Manchester United. I think he is the one that has sort of buckled under this new regime. It's like Sir Jim takes no prisoners. We know this. Ten Hag does not stand a chance when it comes to him or Sir Jim Radcliffe. He looks all right on front, but when you read into Jim Radcliffe and how he operates, he's a no-nonsense character who doesn't take no for an answer or does not take any prisoners. You only have to look how he is negotiating the situation with Dan Ashworth right now and that whole saga. He's not going to buckle. He is not going to back down. So Ten Hag has to fall in line with the new rules, and I think he's doing it. I think there's signs that Ten Hag is doing it. So this, for me is the big thing from all of this announcement today. And I am not surprised one bit about Mike McGrath's uh, article in The Telegraph today regarding how this structure is going to operate. I think Ten Hag is just going to be a... He's going to be a cog in the machine. That's it. 
the days of, I've said this before, the days of the manager being the most important person at Manchester United are gone. Football has changed and Ten Hag is going to be more of a head coach, not a manager. That's the way it is. And what them head coach uh, job titles and what he's going to be doing within that role, I think they'll be made very clear. I think there is going to have to be a big emphasis on coaching the team, getting the best out of that and full-on communication with the youth team and the academy and just dealing with that situation. He can put his input into certain players and what he needs and then the rest of the structure will go and do that work for him. It's exactly how Pep Guardiola works and how Klopp has had to work and change. He has wanted players at Liverpool and been told no by the system. These are the ones we recommend for how you want to play. You may see something, but all we do all season, this is ten, Jurgen Klopp's structure and his team above him talking, what we do all season is concentrate on how you're playing and finding the best players to fit that system through all of the characteristics that are needed. And that's what they do. So they have the power to tell the coach, the manager, head coach, whatever you want to call him, no, that's not happening. These are the players for you. And that way, that takes and relieves pressure off the manager as well. So you can understand it. Like every manager that's failed and tried to take on the reins of handling the whole of Manchester United over the last 10 years, every single one of them has failed. So when he has to come in and completely scrapping the old regime and saying this is how it's going to work, Eric, are you willing to fall in place and fall in line and work this way for us? Because that's what it's going to take for you to keep your job. So right now... The ball is in Ten Hag's court. I think, and I'm seeing signs, and this is just my own opinion on this, and guys, I'll come to you in the chat in a second now on this, is that he is starting to put things in place and change certain ways. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how he handles the last part of this season now, these last 10 games. Really, really intrigued to see how this goes down because it is a massive change for everyone, especially Eric Ten Hag. And... It's gonna be it's gonna be a weird one. It really is. Right, we've got some new members in the house. I'm gonna to have to get through all of these quickly first, guys. Uh, Dazzle has been a member for five months. Legend has just come in with a comment saying, "Attack wins you games. Defense wins you leagues." As Sir Alex Ferguson says, "Defense is an investment that needs to be prioritized in the summer." You are 100% right, Daz. In that, in getting that five months in the bag, he has donated another five memberships, which have gone to Edwin, uh, uh, Bacon Butter, Kevin Henry, Daniel Brain, and Des One. Welcome to the Members Club, my friends. Make sure you please thank Daz Salford for that kind donation. Uh, really appreciate that, Daz. That is awesome. Uh, Charles Van... Uh, Onsalan says, uh, he doesn't say, he says thank you to General Foodie because he's just donated him a membership as well. Another new one in the house. Thank you so much, General Foodie, again. And we have one more membership, which was from Fred, gifted and taken by Stephen McGuire. McGuire. Stephen, welcome to the Members Club. Fred, along with Daz and General Foodie, thank you so much for your donations. Really appreciate it. Now all I need you guys to do is give the video a like and let's get up over that 100 mark and get into the comment section and see where you guys are at with everything. Rajat says, each coach got too much to do. Just simply coach the team and get the best out of what you've got. Anthony's a great example why he should just coach. Point proven there and well made there, MDR Samurai, because yes, he is trying to find players that fit a system that wasn't or isn't there at United. It was there before in a different league with a different club. So that play doesn't necessarily fit into this United setup. That's the difference in the recruitment side. So all the recruitment would have been doing all season is scouring the world for the best that fit into what Ten Hag is doing on the pitch. So Ten Hag hasn't been able to concentrate on what he wants to do on the pitch simply because there's so much going on and so much mess around the football club. Can you imagine... Ten Hag, and this is what we've said, what would Ten Hag have done if he had a full structure in place? Someone would have been dealing with Sancho, someone would have been dealing with Mason Greenwood, Harry Maguire, David De Gea, all of that crap that's been going on and getting in the way that Ten Hag has been involved in, taken completely out of his hands. All he does is turn up to Carrington, as soon as he goes through that gate, he then deals with everything there. The club handle every other little situation. 
we are moving pieces into place. And where some actually see this as being quite scary and the noise is coming out from Ineos and how they're operating, it is weird because it's never been there before at Manchester United. It hasn't. We've been used to Sir Alex Ferguson and then failures trying to imitate Sir Alex Ferguson. It does not work. Sir Alex was a one-off completely, so let's forget about him and the manager being the most important person at Manchester United, it's now about the team, the structure and the system that's in place that wins titles, that takes clubs to the top. Every other team in the league, especially everyone in the top 10 in the Premier League, is doing it. There's only one team that's not got it and not doing it, and that's us, Manchester United. It is a change that is going to take some getting used to for a lot of United fans, but all we have to know is that the best intentions are there from Ineos and they need to make these huge drastic changes. Otherwise, we would just keep falling further and further back. One season wonders ain't going to cut it anymore. And they're not even wonders. They're a League Cup and a Champions League finish. It's not where United want to be. Like Sir Jim said, if United are going to be at the top there, they need to have the best in class all over the place. Is Ten Hag a good coach? He looks hands-on. He looks like he's got it in him. Let's see if taking away the pressures of the rest of running Manchester United can help him and we can now start looking like a properly run football club. Leading to results on the pitch, uh, United are actually playing better football. Oh, God, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Uh, how can uh, you imagine that Waistcoat goals uh, and managers Liverpool would be the icing on the cake uh, for us United fans? How could you imagine Waistcoat goals? Right, yeah, so if you can imagine Southgate going to Liverpool, that would be perfect, yeah. That really would. Uh, I don't mind, that gives him uh, more time with the team, says uh, the fight. Yeah, it does. That's what it's all about. And I think that's what any are trying to get across. It's like, show to us that you are the best coach, the best head coach for Manchester United. Go and show us. Everyone is fit when we come back. It doesn't matter who you upset internationally. This is what Fergie did all of the time. You have to be selfish sometimes, especially when it's pointless friendlies in internationals. Get on with it. Get organising it. Look ahead like Fergie did. He knows when the international break's coming. He's already putting things in motion, making phone calls, organising these international breaks to a point where he's speaking to their managers and going, look, we don't think he is fit enough for two games. Maybe if you play him for half an hour in this game, half an hour in that, or 60 minutes, and then we could possibly bring him back or not play him at all in that, in that second game. This is what he's organised. And that's what Strelix did. Now you've got a football director, or sporting director, director of football, or whatever you want to call it, or other roles within Man United that will be doing that. So Ten Hag will communicate with his team, that above him. They will then start doing all of that work for him and coming back to him. Right, Eric, thank you very much. I will get on to the necessary powers that be to organise this. Thanks for the input. That's after a meeting that they have every single week. I'm not telling United how to run a club, but it's simple, isn't it? That's what it is, a communication factor between five or six people, including the manager, about everything football-related. Ten Hag, go back to that training ground. We'll deal with it. You concentrate on getting the best, then we'll come back to you at the end of the week and tell you exactly where we stand. We've spoken to so-and-so international coach. Uh, don't worry about that player being absolutely overcooked after internationals. We have committed and confirmed that unless it's a full qualifier or an important international, that that player will be playing a certain amount of minutes only and could even possibly be coming back. Like Bruno today. This is why I think things are already in motion and the Ineos effect is taking full effect right now uh, it is because you don't ever see the Casemiro, Casemiro Casemiro and Bruno Fernandes scenario coming up, not with United you really don't uh, let me see what else we've got in the chat here, Leo is in the house, I hope the day comes where we can finally go toe to toe with Madrid in the Champions League, yeah like we were talking this morning about bringing in Kieran Dewsby Hall from Leicester in the Championship well, they're talking about bringing Mbappe in and joining forces with Vinny Jr. Uh, <laughs> it seems like a million miles away, doesn't it? And we used to compete with Real Madrid. It's crazy as it sounds. That's mental, isn't it? 
Like, that there is proof in the fall off from Manchester United. Uh, and like Sir Jim said, like, he wants to be the one that un- that discovers the next Mbappe. He wants to find that player. And this is why I was talking about Drewsby all today. It's like, the player has always been at Leicester. He doesn't know any different. And we don't know if that step up is going to be too much or he is going to flourish under that step up and playing amongst better players. The only way you know is by having a proper recruitment and scouting system in place to know exactly what the characteristics are, put everything into it, and that's what's going to happen from now on. It's not going to be, he looks good, like Antony. He's got some good fancy flicks in the Eredivisie. What about the rest of his life? What about what's going on? Look, look, what Fergie used to do, and this is why he was so brilliant at his job, because he did about five or six men's job in one goal, for Alex. It's completely changed now, and like we've said, so... Realistically, now, I would expect a lot more scrutiny to go into every single transfer and just look what's happening right now with Dan Ashworth. They know the man they want and they are making sure that they get him while still not being or not being shot down or told what's what in negotiations. This, I think, is setting the precedent and the standard with Ineos in terms of how we deal with every single transfer matter or deal going forward at Manchester United. It's a breath of fresh air in a way. Yeah, it's annoying because we haven't got Dan Ashworth in. But what is the best outcome in this? Is it us actually having a backbone in dealing with negotiations and ultimately the benefit being the long run? Are we all desperate? I'm I'm guilty of this as well. I want Dan Ashworth in now because I don't want Myrtle in charge of anything. But from what I'm seeing with Ineos and how they're handling the Ten Hag situation and how things are changing at United, little subtle changes, I'm not as concerned about Myrtle because uh, I know that by the time the summer comes, Barada will be in situ and Ineos will not be going out spending the money that we did and wasting it on the players we have done. We definitely won't. So, yes, uh, I am feeling a lot better about that. I've convinced myself a little bit along the line as well. But, yeah, you have to sort of decide where you're at with it in terms of the long the long plan going forward or the immediate, we just want to hit the ground running. And I've talked about that three-year plan. So this is why this summer is just beyond intriguing to everyone because how are Ineos going to work with Myrtle? Like, how much power? Who is going to be doing the negotiating? Like, Myrtle can go in with a certain plan that he wants to do and negotiate a deal, but he would have been told by Ineos exactly what he's got to spend and how much he can deal uh, on this, uh, on that particular transfer or whatever it is. So, yeah, really interesting times ahead uh, for United, but that's my stance on where everything has been from today. Like, the Mike McGrath article, more than any other today and any other bit of news on the Bruno Fernandes and putting it all into context as to like how this affects Manchester United going forward I think long term definitely a positive for United it's going to be hard to take straight away and I still think the biggest issue and the one big mistake that Sir Jim has made so far I'm agreeing with pretty much everything else right now but that three year thing yeah, that's going to be tight That is going to be tight. It really is. Let's just see. eh? Let's see how it comes. But, yeah, uh, the noises that are coming out, I'm not too concerned about. Uh, Ten Hag being a head coach rather than a manager. I understand it. I do. Bruno Fernandes coming back. His sign of Eric Ten Hag doing a little bit more this season than he did last season. Like, last season, they're running pretty much just fell off a cliff like not no it didn't fall off a cliff that's wrong I apologise it wasn't off a cliff we got through in the end it was alright but we did sort of drain away towards the back end didn't we we struggled towards the back end of it Uh, into the chat we go let's get into the comments Uh, Charles says uh, is that not the actual problem Adam Felix Ferguson did everything and now the club are used to that way of doing things when Fergie left we still have uh, we still have not put the necessary people in place. Like, Sir Alex and David Gill worked as a tag team, double team, uh, formidable. And they both went at the same time. And United just thought that they could replace both of them people with two other characters that clearly were not qualified to do that job. Like, nobody knew 
what they did. Like, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. That's the old saying, isn't it? Sir Alex and David Gill did so much at Manchester United. Even David Gill has said, look, United are doing the right thing in employing people from outside of the club. Because quite clearly, he didn't want to throw anyone under the bus who's at United. But in saying that, he did. Because that is what has been wrong the last 10 years at this football club. It is, because we've made mistake after mistake after mistake. So, yeah, Charles, that was the problem. But United just relied on Sir Alex to get us through and cover up the cracks, paper over so many cracks. Uh, Stephanette, new structure looks to be telling media nothing quite refreshing to see. Little leaks here and there, Stephanie, but nothing too drastic. 100 likes in the bag, guys. Thank you so much. Keep liking the video, everybody. Really appreciate it. And if you do want to join the channel as well, the join button is right there below the bottom of the screen. And also, uh, description, there's a link right there below, guys, on this video. Click on that. As Tenag says, trust the process, but Ashworth process. We wanted uh, best in class, and Ashworth is 100% that, says Boxing Straight Talk. Uh, Graham says... Uh, sorry, Graham, I lost your message there. I'm back again. Here we go. Real Madrid used to sign players like Savio and Pedro... Uh, uh, Munitis, uh, Florentino Perez, as obvious, uh, as odious as he is, uh, has revolutionised Real Madrid in his second stint as president. He has changed tact. He has, he has definitely changed. I just see now. What else we got in here? Uh, sorry, guys, I'm just scrolling through your comments. Uh, MDR Samurai, uh, they want a manager they can control, and Southgate is that guy. He, he could be, but if you're looking at a coach, Southgate is not the guy. He really isn't. Because look what he's got. We've given the best tools, and he's failed. He has been out coached and out tactic, hasn't he? Every single time when it's come to the punch. Boxing Straight Talk. Whoever Ashworth taps up for manager, we need to back it. Because look at the state of the club. Yep, we do. Uh, just not Southgate. Please. Uh, let me see. Solid football IQ. Good on the ball. That's all right then. Yeah, that's the sort of play we want. Definitely. Uh, give Adam a like, says Rodder. Yeah, please do. Give me a like. That's a good idea as well. I like that one. Uh, we have a new member in the house. Uh, Lou Later, thank you so much. Honest Tiger for donating that membership. Lou, welcome to the Members Club. Eighth one of the night. Thank you so much, Honest Tiger. Uh, we are loving that. We are we are definitely adding to the army today on the membership side of things. 100% we are. It's been a mega day. Uh, United Spotlight. I just want this international break over so we can stop talking about Southgate. Uh, the Solu no way uh, Ineos uh, surely probably means there surely with no way Ineos take Southgate and get the fans or their back from the get go uh, off their back from the get go I think that was meant to say I understand what you're saying there mate totally uh, it wouldn't be a good move I think Sky was saying today they were reporting like no other big club is going to be in for Gareth Southgate so why are Manchester United in for Southgate it's weird isn't it it is it is if I'm watching on my tablet my name is Michael R4 if I'm on my laptop my name is Michael Bethway okay mate I've got you <laughs> thanks for the input uh, let's see what else is going uh, oh, I have other news here. I've got a few more bits to talk about as well uh, and that being Raphael Varane. Uh, don't forget, guys, I am out all day tomorrow. So we will sneak any sort of content in that we can uh, as and when. Uh, I will be bringing you content again, as I always do. Uh, it may not be live. It may just be pre-recorded stuff. But all of the information that's going around the football club will be brought to you one way or the other. I won't let you down, even when we're out uh, having a few uh, a few sherbets. <laughs> There we go. Yes, uh, celebrating uh, the wedding tomorrow. Uh, the Sunday show, the paper round, will definitely be going ahead as normal. Maybe different location, but definitely as normal. So that's going to be interesting. 
with a sore head. Yes, it will. So, guys, I'm going to need you all in there, egging me on to eat that croissant on Sunday. Uh, Cafel says, uh, Southgate's win rate against teams ranked in the top 10 is abysmal. He won't be able to improve United in the Premier League. It's a good job he's not coming then, isn't it, Cafel? That's the one. Um, Mag says, Mr... Eric Ten Hag is a good manager. He needs more time. We just beat Liverpool. That's a big team. We all had to back Mr. Eric Ten Hag. Love our manager. You're going nowhere. Hopefully. Well, unless we get the best manager in the world coming, but they're all taken. So maybe any of us want to create a new style of manager in Ten Hag and that being a head coach rather than the actual manager. So, yeah. I would look at it that way. They're looking to improve people that are there while bringing in all, more people to help United get to that next level. Bringing in the best of class to make best in class, if that makes sense. Yeah? I think so. Southgate would get Madrid relegated. Yeah. Z says, whoever is giving Southgate props really need to find a new dealer because they really on that dope. Christine says, Adam uh, uh, Adam and you and Kaz getting married. Sorry if uh, you are uh, and picked up this up wrong. Sorry. Yeah, no, we're at someone else's wedding tomorrow. Uh, that's what it is, Christine. Thank you. <laughs> we'll still be having a good time now. Michael says, I am at the Etihad Stadium tomorrow to watch Manchester City versus Manchester United. Women with Pete Allen. Go for it, Mike. Love that. Up the Reds. Hopefully we can do it. We definitely owe them this season anyway. Uh, let me just see. Uh, yeah, Kaz is just sorting that out uh, in the comments. I've seen that. Yeah, but uh, other news I wanted to bring up uh, was uh, regarding Rafael Varane and his current situation. We've been talking about this on and off, as you know. Uh, and that is that uh, Al Itiad are relatively advanced in terms of pitching a contract proposal to Rafael Varane, who is out of contract in the summer. Uh, that coming from Ben Jacobs earlier on today. So this is the worry again, isn't it? We talked about this before. Rafael Varane has always come up in the chat uh, in our community as a player that really we want to be trying to keep hold of. Like, you don't want to be losing your best and think about the players coming in. If it is young, unproven, Premier League centre-backs. Then Rafael Varane's a great player to have around with all his experience as well and for them to learn off. So I still think he can do a job, though. I mean, I think he's got two more years. Personally, if you were asking me how you think, how I think the situation's going to pan out right now, then I don't think it is. I think Rafa's going to go, and I'll be gutted. I will, but things need to happen and need to change. And if any of us want to hit that wage bill and that wage structure, then I think Rafael Varane is probably going to be a victim, I do. Uh, and, yeah, it's, it's what it is, isn't it, at the end of the day. It's just business, as they say. Uh, when it comes to football contracts, he's out of uh, he's out of his uh, current deal at the end of this season and other offers are on the table now, as it is. So, yeah. Look at it that way. Manchester United are also looking at another midfielder, which is uh, what is it now? Gregory Sudikov from Shakhtar Donetsk, a young Ukrainian midfielder who is tearing it up over there uh, in Ukraine with Shakhtar. Again, last time we bought a midfielder from Shakhtar, his name was Fred. He didn't quite work out as we all hoped, although Fred had his moments here and there. But yeah, I don't know. Don't know much about him. I'm really, again, uh, sceptical of that league and the quality and the standard, but this is what's going to happen. The approach from Ineos is going to bring up all of the speculation and rumours that Manchester United are looking at the likes of uh, Sudikov and the likes of uh, Jewsby Hall from Leicester. These are the types of players like cut deals, last years of contracts, young players... Like, it's it's going to be a bit of a merry-go-round. It really is. We know what it's like, but this summer's going to be 20 times worse. 20 times worse for us to deal with. Uh, Michael says, if Manchester United win the FA Cup, do you not get Champions League place? Will it be the end of Ten Hag? Uh, from what I've been told, like, the FA Cup isn't enough. Uh, it only gets you in the Europa League anyway. 
which were already pretty much set in stone, being six in the league. So, yeah, FA Cup doesn't do anything to tonight. It's a trophy and it's great. And it will be a shame if we lose another manager after winning the FA Cup. But the Champions League is everything. Champions League is everything to Ineos. Uh, and I think the signs are clear. Like, go out with what you've got right now, Eric Tenag, and prove to us that you are the Manchester United man to work alongside this new structure. Take this team forward. Get us back in the Champions League for a second season and get a trophy on the way, and that's just a plus point. That's it. So, yeah, you. it'll be harsh. It will be harsh, but let's just back in for what it is all the way through to the end of the season and go from there. That's it. Uh, into the comments again. We are going home with the trophy. Come on, United. We are going to win. The, t uh, win. Uh, the team has to play like the way we played against Liverpool, says Mags. Uh, Adam, uh, Charlton, agree it's terrible business. Uh, all right, he's talking about someone else there. Let's see. Varane basically won everything for Champions Leagues and a World Cup. Yep, he has. And he made us want to go and leave United and earn a little bit more money at the end of his career. Max out, look after his family. You can't really begrudge him that. He has helped United out. He has won everything that there is to win in the Premier League. Uh, sorry, in world football, apart from the Premier League. But you can't begrudge him wanting to move on and just take a bit of a, a windfall paycheck from now until the end of his career. He's done everything. Uh, guys, please give the video a like. Uh, we are creeping up to the 150 mark. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button as well if you are tuning in for the first time. Uh, yeah, and please do download our Sofa Score app, best football app, best update match day app that there is there. It's completely free, guys. Costs you nothing. No sign up. Zil Zilch. App Store. Download the app. The link is in the description below. Or scan that QR code, bottom right hand corner. It's all yours, guys. Get onto it. Get downloading the best football app out there. All the team news. In-game action, stats, player ratings, everything you need to know, as well as transfers around the world of football and all other sports as well, guys. So please do download SofScore app. It is they, they are our partners here on FUTV. Uh, and everything helps the channel as well along the way, guys. So, yeah, please do get on it and make sure that you are tuned in to the best football app out there. Uh, I want to win UEFA Super Cup, Adam. Well, you've got to win the Europa League or the Champions League first, which we cannot do this season. So maybe in another couple of years. Oof. Well, we qualify for the Champions League. I'm not sure we're in a position next season, Rajat, to win that. We'd have to get very, very lucky. So you may be waiting a while. You may be waiting a while. That's all I'm saying. Uh, one thing I wanted to do, and I'm going to do it now before we uh, finish up the show. Guys, if you are not on TikTok, I want you to get onto TikTok. Uh, we are doing a little bit of different content there on our channel. So it is uh, Forever United TV underscore. It is Forever United underscore TV. That is a link. Uh, uh, that is our name on TikTok. So if you drop down in the description right at the bottom, that is our name there. So what we've been doing, we have been asking people, and this is what I'm bringing on a Friday night. It's a bit of fun. Uh, asking people around Old Trafford who there. Oh, what? Sorry, what? Not who there, but who is? Uh, what is their most unpopular opinion? Jesus Christ! To get it out in the end, Adam. My God. Uh, so people have been putting their comments in. As and I want you guys to get yours in right now. What is your most unpopular opinion about Manchester United? You know you've got one. You know you've got that opinion about the football club that you know people don't agree with you on it. Uh, what is it? As outrageous as it is, uh, and. You know what? You may tr truly fully believe in it. And that's what a lot of these people, like some of the mad ones that we had over the last week talking to people outside Old Trafford. One guy actually said that he thought Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should have had another five years. Adamant about it. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, another guy said uh, that Mark Hughes is in the top five best players of all time at Manchester United. There you go, there's another one. Uh, and, yeah, let me know what you think. I mean, on that one there, I think 
Uh, I haven't got videos of dancing pigeons on there, Michael. No. Now, they didn't want to do it. Like, I asked them, but this oh, arrogant. They just wanted food, greedy bastards. Uh, I might have a glass of wine as a warm-up. Uh, wine, Adam. Yeah, get it out, Kaz. Let's go for it. <laughs> I think a, a nice chill night with a glass uh, of red, I think, is in order tonight. But, yeah, what's your unpopular opinion, guys? Come on, come on. Uh, Kaz has dropped the TikTok link in the description, not in the description, in the chat there, the live chat. Let's go. I'm only going to do a couple just to finish up the show, guys. Just a bit of fun for a Friday night. We're going to do this, but probably structure it a bit better. But I just want to test the water. Uh, Louise says, my unpopular opinion is I just loved Ole and would have kept him uh, maybe not five years uh, on the trajectory, though. Uh, all emotions and no logic. That's well. Yeah, well, that's just, again, that's why I never wanted former United players actually managing the club because I don't want to fall out with any other legends that I used to love watching. Like, watching Ollie and the demise of Ollie at this football club destroyed me. It really did. It was horrible. It was probably the worst time and I've been to some games while Ollie was in charge and they just, they just emptied everything out of you. They really did. It was just a bad, bad time to be a United fan. It really was. Unpopular opinion, Cristiano Ronaldo is our best seven. It's a good one, Rajat, that. Guys, anyone coming in on Rajat's there? Was Cristiano Ronaldo Manchester United's best number seven? I disagree, but I'm of a different era. I've seen all of... Uh, I've seen a lot of our best sevens, to be honest. I've seen all of Beckham's era under the number seven shirt. I've seen all of Cantona's. Seen all of Cristiano Ronaldo's and then everyone else passed that. God help us. But yeah, uh, I disagree. The most influential number seven was Cantona for me. Uh, I know some people may disagree with that one as well, but yeah. Uh, Louis uh, Graham says, I hated having to listen to taunts about him. I wanted him to be moved aside because the stick hurt me personally. I agree with that one, Graham, actually. Agree, uh, I was pretty deviled when they sacked Ole. Love Ole. It's a ha it's, it's like you were emotionally connected to him. My most pop my most unpopular opinion is the only one is the only one king uh, that was the lawman. I I don't think that's going to be unpopular. I think he said it's a generational thing. Uh, General Foodie says the best seven was best. Best is best. Cantona for me says United Metal. I agree. My favourite seven was Steve Coppel, says Graham. I knew Graham would pick up someone like that. That's completely different to everyone else. George Best for me says Andrew. Uh, Adam, I also <coughs> <coughs> was on a bunch of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer matches and hands down better football, better signings, and even now better than Eric Ten Hag. Ooh. Going right in there. Charles says, sorry to be opposite Adam. Why did we sign Mount? Uh, I like him as a player, but where do we play him? I still cannot see it. Charles, been saying it all season, mate. Not the player. The wrong type of player. That's what it is. No one's got anything against Mount. He gives everything he's got whenever he plays. And he... I just don't know where he fits in like you, mate. Best number seven was Robson, says Honest Tiger. That's another shout. We just fucking God, man. You've just rolled off the list of sevens, like seriously, at this football club. Epic. Legends. Absolute legends. A new member in the house is Proton. Welcome to the members club, my friend. Stephen Harper has just gifted that membership. Thank you so much. We have nine new members in the house. Can we round that up to a nice even 10 people just to finish off the week? Are we going to get a 10th member of the stream? And we are three likes away from the 150 mark, guys. So one more member, three more likes. Can we do it before we finish up? Dobby says, unpopular opinion, Ollie should never have been given a contract. He should have served as caretaker until the end of the season and then left the football club. Uh, 
unpopular? Maybe not. I think some will actually look at that, Dobby, and go, yeah, I agree with you there on that one, mate. Uh, United Metal, unpopular opinion, is Manchester United, uh, is Manchester not United one? What? Is Manchester not United one? I don't like any music from Manchester, sorry. Right, so you don't like the Stone Roses entrance music then, I'm taking it. I don't know where you're going with that one. Uh, if you don't like Manchester music, my God, like seriously, because there is a lot of brilliant artists from Manchester, is there not? Like, I don't know, it might be a different type of music. Very indie rock based sort of music, Manchester bands, you would say. Definitely. Well, guys, that is it for the show. Thank you so much for joining us. The week is over. The weekend is here. Internationals are going on as we speak. And, yeah, countdown to real football starts now. Saturday tomorrow, guys. I will keep you posted as to everything that's going on. It's going to be a mental one, guys. So bear with us tomorrow. Uh, it will be just videos as and when, uh, keeping the same sort of time schedule thing and everything like that. If we can get live, we will get live. I won't let you down. But it may just be other content as well tomorrow. Uh, we are going to go and enjoy our day and have a good time and have a few drinks. And it starts now because we're going to go and have a nice glass of wine, me and Kaz, and chill out for the rest of the night. But all that's left for me to say is thank you so much. Uh, and we did just get, hang on a minute, we just had some memberships drop in just as I'm finishing up. Fantastic guys, Leo and Fred have both gifted memberships and they have gone to Stuart, Lanny and, uh, what's that, one, 2K Ted. Welcome to the members club, my friends. Absolute legends that are Fred and Leo. Love that, guys. Don't forget, guys, uh, in the live chat there, Kaz has just dropped the TikTok link as well there go give us a follow on tiktok as well all of the content that i do will be blasted out there as well uh, uh napsa has also just become a member as well thank you so much my man love that we have collected well over 20 members just today alone guys that's what this community is all about trust me i want to get this membership army as big as possible because what we've got coming up and it will be open to everyone soon enough, but you members are going to be part of something special going forward. More on that Sunday slash Monday as to what is coming up. A few of you already know about it, but if you are just joining the membership scheme, stay tuned for the membership posts and separate content for the members only. Uh, it is just a little sneak preview as to what is coming up. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Brilliant stream, as always. I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, by hook or by crook, the content will still be there, guys. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. And you know what? Up the home nations. That's all I'll say. Let's just get everyone winning and get everyone in these major tournaments. It'll make it better for us as a spectacle, won't it? See you all tomorrow, everyone. Have a great